and before I get into it, I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to make a, a couple of announcements tonight. I will be having a webinar. I've been trying to have a webinar. People that weren't there, I guess, cause my schedule, I haven't been as regular as I should be. I start the webinar. Nobody's there. I guess you don't know I'm having it. When you go into your back office, if it says there's a webinar scheduled for tonight, there's a webinar scheduled for tonight. Okay. So there is a webinar scheduled for tonight. It's going to be at 9 p.m. Central Time. Central Time. That's Texas time. Okay. So there will be a webinar tonight for all the members of SPC University. All right. Next. Let's get these likes up to 100 while I'm talking. Because you know I don't start the show until I get 100 likes. So I get 100 likes. I don't start the show until I get 100 likes. So let's get 100 likes up. Uh, next, um, I'm going to be doing a review of a case. And let me just talk about this real quick. Because I have, like, some attorneys and uh, th- uh, people like that. I, it seems like I'm pissing off because, you know, I got a, a video on TikTok. It, it's done almost 700,000 views. I got another one that I just put up, got about 100,000. So my TikTok is blowing up. You can go over my TikTok. As, it's the same as my Instagram, at Yusuf L underscore. It's Yusuf underscore L-E-L underscore 19. It's the same on TikTok and Instagram. I don't have any other Instagram or any other TikToks. So if somebody is in, especially if there's a guy talking about investments, there's a lot of guys who are cloning sites of mine. I would think some of my followers are a little bit smarter than that. If I'm going to do an investment, it's going to be through currency. So if I'm not talking about currency circulator in your um, DM, then, you know, it's not me. <laughs> All right. I will hit you in your DM, but it's going to be about currency circulator. It's not going to be about anything else. All right. Because that's my gateway to investments. I'm not going to say, hey, you know, you need to go over here and get in crypto. And I'm not going to do that. All right. Next, um, I want people to download this off of my website. Um, if you go over to SPC university, actually, I'm going to put it in the chat for you right now, but it's on the PDF downloads. Um, this Lopez versus the commerce clause transcript. I'm doing this because I know these attorneys, uh, somebody, let me just tell y'all something. Somebody, somebody attacked my website and it, it wasn't recently. It was a couple of weeks ago and they were very malicious. They erased everything off my website. I don't know if y'all remember, I had my website down for a little while, about 24 hours um, or two days or so. Somebody came in and they were able to break into my website and they just deleted everything off of it. Fortunately, I had everything backed up. And what they particularly attacked is the PDF download section. The PDF download section, um, I'm thinking it's this case because this case right here talks about the, this is Scalia's in there saying that, you know, everything is commerce is commercial. So I want you to download that. I just put the, uh, uh, link in the chat. Um, I think it would be a very, very good study group tool. If you have study groups out there, that would definitely be something that you want to study. Also, you want to check out my Facebook group, my Facebook group. I will put that in the chat too. It is, we got like over 27,000 members in my Facebook group. Um, There is all kind of reference material there. Um, If you just kind of the kind of person that's opposed to spending money and you think you can go out there and find out things on your own, uh, that would definitely be a, um, uh, definitely would be a very good place to uh, start is my Facebook group. I listen to the people in my Facebook group and sometimes I, I read some of the comments, you know, some of the things that people say and I'm like, you know, and it just, it, it kind of like is, is draining. Cause Oh man, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go through all of this. All right. Let's see. Oh man. Let's see. Why did I just do? wasn't that it wasn't that must be this one right here it's not it but you know you go to my facebook group i'm sitting here looking for something right now
And my Facebook group is Secure Party Creditors dash HFR. Secure Party Creditors dash, dash HFR. You can actually get to it from my homepage on my uh on my uh on my uh YouTube page. If you go to my homepage or my YouTube page and my channel page, I got links to all of my well, I used to have them up there. I don't see them no more. Where'd they go? Man. YouTube and change things around. Oh, links to all my sites. Okay, I see what they did. They got new things. So if you go to links to all my sites, um, you will see uh on my page where I have, let me see if I can put it up there. Well, just go to my homepage. <laughs> go to my homepage. I'll, I'll put the link in there. Let me put the link over there. I'll put the link. This is the link to my Facebook group right here. I'm putting it in the chat. There it is right there. All right. All right. So I'll put it in the chat for you. Okay. Now, today I'm going to do a video review. I thought this was a, I, I picked this video out. I'm always looking for videos to do reviews on. A lot of them I'm to pay, uh, I cherry pick from attorneys on their website, Sovereign Citizen Failing Court Video Reviews. And I'll take them, edit out their information and put my in because usually their review is just ridiculous. It's from the perspective of an attorney. It's from the perspective of an individual who's trying to keep you in slavery. It's from a perspective of an individual that thinks statutes are laws and thinks that a judge can do anything they want to do and that somehow public servants are the masters and we the people are the, are the serfs. This is the mindset of these people. You know, you can just tell. They don't say that, but you can tell how they talk. This is how they really think. And they are highly opposed to channels like this where we are reawakening to individuals, especially in the United States, to get them into an understanding of who they are and get back to the regular, the original Republican form of government. The word democracy is nowhere in the uh, Constitution for the United States of America. We don't make a pledge to a democracy when we say the Pledge of Allegiance. We, it says to the republic. Our flag stands for republic, not for democracy. I don't know where these people are getting their information from. They don't like the things I say, but quite frankly, I don't give a fuck. Okay, I don't give a fuck what you think. All right? you are, you're going to be reminded of your jobs and your duties of who you are, and I'm going to continue to waking up these people so they can understand who they are. All right. So, let's get to it. This is a video of an individual I uh, kind of caught. Um, I thought it had some very good points in it. A lot of these, a lot of these videos, they, you know, they, kind of, they, they, they try to pick the worst ones they can find to make a mockery out of individuals. Uh, however, there's always some good jewels in it. They particularly, it's hard for them to make mockery out of some individuals because some of the things they're saying, this is actually a bench trial. It's not a jury trial, which I think was very odd. Um, and I think you're going to find a lot of the dialogue that is in here that is odd as well. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look at this and let's look at it real quick. Let's see what we can, uh, uh, what, what we can uh, uh, garner through uh, watching this particular video. Let's get to it. Man, I'm gonna sue the out of you guys next, you know that? What did they sue the court? Next, you're next. You guys are next. Oh, in Aprilville. I'm currently suing Kendall County and Bolingbrook. And I will be suing DuPage County, Aurora, PD, and Yes. Cook County. <laughs> now, sometimes, sometimes when I listen to these videos, these individuals, I question if some of these are not staged. You know, I think some of these videos are staged that they do reviews on, quite honestly. I don't think all of them are, uh, 
you know, just regular people. Some of them, some of them I think that are staged and then some of them just people are just crazy. I, I haven't quite watched this one all the way through. I'm kind of watching it kind of with you like really paying attention to it with the first time. Appreciate the $5. My culture, uh, 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 my culture, uh, my rules. I appreciate that piece to the gods, uh, the five bones. Thank you very much. Um, however, what this is what I want I want to say about this portion. Notice that this officer is making sure, I think it's a female, that her face is not revealed, which I think that is quite odd. That's quite odd. You're going to see a lot of times that police officers will cover up their name tags or their badge numbers. I find that odd, too. When I see a police officer doing that, I think it's a police officer that's up to something nefarious. Why wouldn't you want your name tag displayed or people to see your uh, badge number? or anything like that. Um, the next thing is that suing these people in their own courts, I don't think is the most effective thing to do. I think that filing claims against their bonds are more effective. Um, their bonds are insurance. Everybody in the public has to be insured. All right. So if they, if they are not, if they're not, uh, if they're not acting within the ambit of their delegated authority, then you have a right to file a claim against them with the risk management of the municipality and make them uninsurable for, Public service. Uh, everybody in the public has to be insured. That's why they all take an oath. Their oath is their bond. Their word is their bond. And they have given a promise to abide by that, and that promise is insured. So when they break that promise, you cash in on that bond. They do the same thing. Equality under the law is mandatory. They do the same. Homeland Security does the same thing when somebody comes into the country and they ask you, what are you here for? How much money you have with you? Who are you going to see? What is your business here? And then you put all this on down on a piece of paper, and then you end up getting arrested in the United States. That document is going to be the top uh, page on your discovery. And it has an OMB on a uh, number on it, Office of Management and Budget. All right. It's a bond. You gave your word. A word is a bond. You gave your promise to some. It's an affidavit. And you brought and you lied. And they cashing in on it. Appreciate that. Gene G T. I don't know. Blessings. Thank you for the $9.99. I appreciate that, bro. All right. So understand that. So I don't think that uh, Title I, uh, Title, uh, what is it, 18 U.S.C. 241 and 242, you know, conspiracy, uh, acting under color of law to, you know, to violate a person's rights. I'm not saying it won't work, but a lot of times people, they have low le levels of success. It doesn't hurt, though, you know, for you to do it, but you can do it. But I think of much more. I mean, one time um, I was in, um, in, a, in a court. Uh, in uh, I was doing some business in Cobb County, and I was getting a uh, a judge's oath of office. And um, you know, I'm in uh, and I usually go down to the Secretary of State's office. Like when you're dealing with state judges, all of their oath of offices are at the Secretary of State. Okay, all of them. You don't have to go to the courthouse and get their oath of office, even though they do have a copy of it there as well. And the judge is supposed to have a copy of it in her chambers, oath of office. I, right, however. The state has them on file. And sometimes it's better to go down to the Secretary of State's office and get a copy of a judge's oath of office than to go down to the courthouse because of the courthouse, a lot of times they all working together. Because I went in there and I had been getting like copies of a judge's oath of office. And this one time I went in there, you know, the clerk, uh, she's going to tell me that, we, you know, we don't give uh, copies of the judge's oath. And I'm saying, what are you talking about? I was just here last month and got a copy. And she was like, well, and she got, just got quiet. And then she didn't no, what she did was she went and made a copy of it. And it, it was like a copy off of a, a Xerox copy. And I'm like, what is this? I said, ma'am, this is a Xerox copy of the judge's oath of office. I need to certify a copy. We don't issue those. I said, I just got one last month. She just looked at me. She just got quiet when I said last month. And so I said to her, I said, that's okay. I'll get it from the secretary of state. And I turned and walked out. As I was turning to walk out, I saw her eyes get big, and she hit a button under under her desk. They got a button where they can, uh, where they, it's like an emergency button. So she she didn't think I saw her, but I saw her at the corner of my eye. She hit this button, and as I was walking out, about four sheriff deputies walk, ran in, and they ran into her. And I was walking out as they were coming in. So I went to the elevator, and when I got to the elevator, they all rushed me at the elevator. Sir, 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 step out the elevator. And I stepped out the elevator. I said, yes, may I help you, gentlemen? And I was suited up. I was suited and booted. And I said, may I help you, gentlemen? 
She said, yes, the clerk just told us that you were in there harassing the clerks. Just a bona fide, bald-faced fucking lie. Okay? And I said, well, no, sir. I said, I was talking to her much like I'm talking to you right now. And he said, well, that's not what we heard. I said, well, do you have cameras in your in there? He said, yes, we do. I said, let's go look at the cameras. I said, let's go look at And so about this time, the sergeant rolls up. He said, what's going on? And I'm like, uh, and he said, this guy's in there arresting, uh, harassing the clerks. He wants the judge's oath of office and all that. So he said, you can, get a, uh, you can get a copy of the judge's oath of office offline. I said, you can't get a copy of a judge's oath of office offline. I mean, it's telling me anything. He said, well, what do you want a copy for? A judge can do whatever they want to do. I said, no, a judge cannot do whatever they want to do. A judge has to do their constitutional duty. As long as they act within the ambit of their delegated authority, then they're immune. However, once they act outside that delegated authority, they become, I can uh, file a claim against their bond and make them uninsurable for public service. And he said, he just, at that moment, he just told all his other officers, he said, y'all leave. He just told all of them, y'all leave. So then he looked at me and he said, he said, how do you know that? A lot of people don't know that. I said, a lot of people don't know their rights either. They don't read the Constitution. So what he did was he got two more officers to come. They didn't touch me because, you know, that's assault. And they escorted me out of the building off of the premises. And they, didn't, they did not stop. And not only off the court, uh, court grounds, they made sure I crossed the street and went on the other side of the street. And only then did they turn around and go back into the building. So, you know, so the things I'm telling you on this channel, they might not like it, but it's things that you are supposed to know because that's public information. That's public information. You call in your risk management in your municipality and talk to them. Everybody on this channel should be familiar with risk management in their municipality. You are the ones that are over these people. These people ain't over you. They got jobs. That's a job. How can a person who ever have a job be in some type of superior position over the people. And he working a job. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. He got a job. His job can be taken away from him is my point. It can be taken away from him. So there is a delegation of duty. I didn't commit any crime. I didn't trespass. I came in there asking for a judge's oath of office. See how ignorant they be in the, uh, you know, they be ignorant in the chat. <laughs> and just in the chat, I come in, I ask a, a clerk for a judge's oath of office, which is, is information that as a citizen that I'm, I'm entitled to is public information. You can't deny it to me. I'm not, I'm not making a request. I'm not making a request. I need this judge's oath of office. And if you can't provide it to me, then we need to get the sheriff and go over here and arrest this individual that is acting as a judge in this courthouse because they are, they are an imposter because they don't have an oath of office on file. So I need you, sheriff. My next trip, if I can't get the oath of office, my next stop is over to the sheriff, and I'm going to ask the sheriff to go over and arrest that individual. For, and it'll turn up then. You'll get the oath of office in. If you ever have any trouble, but that's your next, your next stop. Go to the sheriff and say, uh, uh, sir, I want you to go over and arrest this man or this woman. I've tried to obtain their oath of office. I don't see one on file. And when you're in the courtroom, here's a very, very powerful phrase that you can say to a judge. You can say, your honor, will your bond withstand the commercial liability that is being introduced into this courtroom today? Will your bond withstand the commercial liability that is being introduced into this courtroom today? Tell that to a judge and watch a look, look on their face. You say that when it things like, like they just getting very, very disrespectful for you. Because, you know, they get disrespectful for no reason because these people don't like you asking questions. I'm sitting here posting videos on TikTok. All I'm at is just questions, constitutional questions. We got a Sixth Amendment right to know the nature and cause of the action, and these motherfuckers is mad that I'm telling y'all what to say in court. They talking about, I see some dudes talking about suing me and shit. I said, what you suing me for? I'm telling you, you're going to court. Will, will this work? What do you mean, will it work? I'm sitting there asking a question. I'm not trying to see if something works. I'm trying to see, ask, that, notice, 
for these people to be intelligent like they think they are, they man, when you can tell when they get scared and nervous because they start throwing things out that it makes no sense whatsoever. It's almost like um, uh, gaslighting. Uh, you know, I've become to understand what that word gaslighting means. And that's exactly what it is. I like the word obfuscation a lot better. I think that's a little bit more um, formal, you know, and a little bit more sophisticated in using the word obfuscation. But we can use some, you know, some hood terminology, you know, gaslighting. You know, they start talking about it, like, what are you talking about, man? I'm like, they don't have any, I, I, I want to see this work. What do you mean work? I'm asking a question. Let's get past the question and then we can find out what something works. I'm just asking the judge a question. What jurisdiction are you operating under? That's not trying to make something work. That's asking a question. And I'm looking for a response. I'm asking a question that the person sitting on the bench has a constitutional duty and responsibility to respond to. That's what I'm asking. But you want to give the impression that the judge is some kind of master sitting up there and I'm some kind of serf. And that is the illusion that you're trying to keep up, sir. And it don't work. It, that shit has come. You're in the age of information, man. And it, this is the thing, too, that just puzzles me. How can y'all think that y'all are going to continue on this path and, and, and people got the internet, they can pull up shit and investigate shit and and how do you think you're going to keep these lies going? I see what y'all did with Google. Google is some trash now. Y'all just sanitized the shit out of Google. I think I'm going to just take it off all my shit. You know, I'm like, Google is a trash search engine now. It is totally dedicated to a communist liberal uh, ideology. Also, we had an individual on here. He started cussing me out because I said that Democrats are communists. Yeah, bitch. I said it. They're communists. You go, go do a video and read the communist manifesto to all your listeners and then compare it to the ideology of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party ain't nothing but welfare. It's a welfare uh, 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 party. What do you think socialism and communism is? It's welfare. It's a welfare party. That's why most of the Jews over there, because the Jews are the ones that created communism. 70, 80% of Jews are, are Democrats. Y'all don't know that? Because they're the ones created communism. They understand it. They commune together. They live in communities together. They understand. You know, that is their philosophy. Come on now. I love that statement, Stereo. It says, people are so used to employing the fallacy of incredulity that they start to interpret questions as statements as a general matter of habit. And that's absolutely correct. You ask them a question, and that's a statement. I ain't, I'm, you, let's see, you know, they say, let's see if it works. That won't work in court. They, they say, they're trying to dissuade you from trying it in court. I'm telling you to ask a question, and they're saying that's not going to work. What do you mean it's not going to work? I just want to answer to the question. And, and when I ask the question, what I'm going to see, either you're going to answer it or you're not. And what's going to, what we're going to find out is whether or not you are honoring the Constitution or not. We're also going to find out if whether the things I'm saying on this channel are true or not. That's why I'm telling people, if I'm a liar, okay, I'm sorry, I'm a liar, I'm misinforming the people, I'm telling people that they're going to get them things arrested, how is asking a judge... How is this going to get you arrested, y'all? Yana, I'll be more than happy to enter a plea into the record. However, before we do that, I have a couple of questions. Uh, it's my understanding that I have a Sixth Amendment constitutional right to know the nature and cause of any action. Is that correct? Is that going to get you arrested? That's going to get you arrested. How about this one? Okay, Yana, is this a civil or criminal action? Is that going to get you arrested? That's going to get you arrested? If these questions are going to get you arrested, those are despots that are in the courthouses. You understand that? And we need to change. We need to change. We need to change some things. If asking those questions are going to get you arrested, those are despots. Those are villains. Those are evil men and women. 
Those are traitors to the Republic. They straight up traitors. If me asking you a constitutional question is going to get me arrested. Now, hopefully we can stop with that. We can stop with that nonsense and silliness. Somebody said, I've been gotten rid of Google. I'm going to get, man, you know, I have such a habit of using it. It's just really a trash, uh, trash search engine now. It used to be a very, very good search engine, man. It was That's, that's why they so big. It used to be good, but now they so concentrated on their political, you know, they've been used as a political weapon right now. You can't find that. You put something in, in the search engine on there, all you're going to find is everything from the left, their opinion on everything. You put in Sandy Hook in YouTube. Now, you're not going to get none of the stuff that you get when you go over to BitChute. Go put in, do a search on Sandy Hook and YouTube and do a search on Sandy Hook and Bit Bit you. They done sanitized all of that. All the reptilian shape shifting. Put in they used to have you could find so many videos on YouTube, evidence people were posting that these reptilians they shape shifting. They took it all down. They don't want none of that on YouTube now. And that's okay. I don't have a problem. It's their platform. They can do what they want to do. I'm not saying that you know they can do what they want to do. It's their business model. They have a right to do whatever they want to do. And I think YouTube is a very, very good business model. Some of those things, if they don't want them on there, I have no problem with that. It can go to, go to some alternative site and you can do it. That's well within their rights to do. I'm in no way, you know, saying that they bad people because they want to do that. However, I do think that they kind of go above and beyond, like on Google, to like when you do searches on certain words, it's like, God damn, everything that come up is, you know, on the left, you know. It's not, it's nothing. If you do sovereign citizen now, you can't find nothing from our side of the equation. Everything is from their side of the equation now. You know, then they've inundated YouTube and Google so that people who are looking for information on these topics, the first thing they'll run into is these people are crazy. These people are this. These people are terrorists. These people are, you know, kooks. That's all you're going to see. The Chromecast, yeah, that Chromecast symbol is 666. That is true. The Chromecast symbol is 666. That's true. That, that is definitely true. I'm, I'd forgotten about that, but it is. It is 666. He said, Cliff High says, chat GPT is one-sided as well. Difficult to get objective responses. They programming it that way. They... Listen, they're not programming us. They're programming the next generation. That's why it's important for you to get a hold of your children and educate your children. That's who they're after. They're not after, you know, did you see that LBGTQ uh, music video that they put out? We're going to get your children. Put it in, in Google, LBGTQ, uh, we're going to get your children. And watch that music video where they sing in. They say, we're going to get y'all children. We're going to convert all your children over. They're after your children. They're not after you. They you you a lost cause. They they after the next generation. They thinking they always think uh they think always 100, 200 years ahead. They already see the world they want 200 years from now. And it's not gonna have any masculinity. There's not gonna be any families. The children are gonna belong to the state. And everybody is gonna have a uh position in society that's already gonna be predetermined based off some sort of caste system or something like that. That's communism. That's what's coming. And a lot of the people who are victim-minded, they're okay with it because they, they can't get ahead in life no way. They're going to welcome a change. Oh, well, you're going to put everybody on equal footing? It's not going to work because it goes against natural law. It goes against the natural law principle of the law of attraction. That's why in order for it to be effective, they got to program your subconscious mind. These people, are, these people ain't no joke now. We called on that song. They said it was Joe. It wasn't no damn joke. You think that was a joke? Okay. We got exposed during COVID. We did. We did get exposed. They they found out, man, oh, we got, man. What they found out during COVID is that 80% of the people are sheep. They found that out during COVID. 80% of the population are sheep. It's just like the... Um, 
the five percenters used to say. You got five percent, like the gods at fifteen percent. What is that? They know, and then you got the eighty-five percent, like five percent, ten percent, and then eighty-five percent. Eighty-five percent is just that's just true. They just they just walking. They just they just dead fucking asleep. They just will do anything. You tell them to do, they will believe anything that's told to them. They watch the news. My mama sit down, she look at CNN all day. Man, do you, you know how hard it is to talk to someone who listens to my channel and you got to go and talk to somebody, watch CNN all day? Go and do that and see how difficult that is. You'll be sitting there like, this motherfucker probed, this motherfucker brainwashed. <laughs> You'll be sitting like, this motherfucker's brainwashed. All right, let's get into it, though. Hey, right, let's get into it. Yeah, the 5% nations of gods and earth. Yeah, that's why I say peace to the gods. All right, we got 341 people in here. Let's get to it. Let's see what we got going on. Okay, yeah, you know, we were just watching this. The police officer masked up. You know, that, that's just really strange to me, how, how this police officer is masked up like this. <laughs> Hello, people. So it looks like the district court has officially granted my informal papyrus. Um, the clerk has issued issued summons for services on the city of Bolingbrook. The U.S. Marshals is appointed to serve the, the defendants on this case. So yeah, um, it looks like uh, everything's a go on this one. So there's a, another lawsuit that I have officially started the procedure on. Well, on their end, they're going to have to start uh, responding to my lawsuit. Okay, I'm going to pause it right here. All right, this is another thing I want you to be cautious of, filling out a form of papyrus. Form of papyrus is a, I think it's Latin for your poverty, your pauper. Okay, you can't afford anything. Now, as a creditor, okay, you when you're in a creditor position, you can't be a, a, pauper, a pauper because you have all the credit. You know, I'm going to give y'all a story, man. They sent it. They sent when I was first going through my ordeal, they sent an undercover in to come talk to me. I knew he was un undercover, extremely intelligent. And he was saying, you know, my brother work in the law office. You know, you need some help getting out of here. So he um, he came back. He told me, look, they want you. He said they'll they'll answer your 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 uh, your habeas corpus if you fill out this right here. It was it was a form of pauperous. And a form of papyrus is an affidavit stating that you are what? That you are destitute. Now, how are you going to discharge a debt and you sitting here filling out shit like this that you're destitute? Be very cautious of putting and signing paper or things like form of papyruses. Get your money together or do whatever you need to do to get things filed, but... I wouldn't fill out an affidavit of form of papyrus unless, you know, unless it's something that's not related uh, to what we're dealing with. Maybe it is an issue that can be taken care of within the legal arena without resorting to some sort of private matter or something like that. But I would caution you, be very careful about filling out a form of papyrus. Understand who you are and know your position. This has been granted, it's been filed, and it's been accepted by the courts. Now I'm just waiting for them to be served and waiting to hear their answer. So Kennel County is done with, Bolingbrook is officially done with. Um, so yeah, uh, I got Kane County next, DuPage, Cook. So yeah, you know, things are going. I mean, it's a timely process, but um, at least it's being taken care of. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for the outcome. All right, guys, later. 
Um, this was in violation of my natural rights, my right to life, liberty, and property, and my rights as a sovereign individual. And it was also in violation of Article 2 of the New Hampshire Constitution, which states that all men have certain natural, essential, and inherent rights, among which are the enjoying and defending life, liberty, and property, or, <clears throat> excuse me, not property, acquiring, possessing, and protecting property, and in a word, of seeking and obtaining happiness. Let me ask you a simple question. It's against the law to be in possession of marijuana in the state of New Hampshire. Do you think you have the right to possess it? Yes, the law. Okay, this is one of your those I got you questions. Okay, the operative term right here that everybody has to be cautious of and pay attention to is the state of New Hampshire. Okay, Yana, could you please define state of uh, New Hampshire and you could you please direct me where I may find where you derive that definition from? What do you mean when you say state of New Hampshire? Okay, what in what sense is that word? Is that a proper noun? Is that the name of something? The state of New Hampshire, the state of Delaware, the state of Georgia, the state of California? Is the state of Delaware the same thing as the Republic of Delaware? Is the state of California the same thing as the Republic of California? Is the state of Texas the same thing as the Republic of Texas? See, these are the things that you need to look. A possessing marijuana is illegal in the state of, of Delaware. In the state of Delaware. I don't know about Delaware state, but the state of Delaware, it is illegal. So the answer to that is affirmative. So that's a trick question. You got to be cautious how you answer that question. Yana, I'm not a resident of the state of Delaware, so I'm not subject to their laws. I'm, 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 a, I'm a citizen of the Republic. Listen. This is the ultimate question y'all got to ask yourself about your public servants. This, this is what it's gotten to. And this is the problem. This is why they're taking everybody further and further away from religion. The ultimate question comes down to, do your public servants honor God? Do they honor the creator of the boundless universe? Thank you, Smart Lock TV. All right. Do they honor that? Do they honor God? Because the thing about it is, is if you're going to be a sovereign individual, then you got to be an honorable individual. You have that. What you're saying is I honor the laws of God. I know, I don't have to have a man govern me and tell me I don't need to kill my neighbor. I know not to do that. I, I don't need another man to tell me not to rape a woman. I don't need another man to tell me not to sleep with another man's wife. That's a big problem too. A lot of you men out there are talking about how many whores there are. Okay, we got a lot of whoremongers out there. Okay, you let uh, you out here sleeping with other men's wife. You know better than she is. Men that sleep with other men's wives are trash. How are you going to say that this woman is wrong? And you right there and you sitting here, you, you involved in it as well. This is the things we got to get back to. See, these are things we got to talk about. Y'all want to be sovereigns and all this, but these hard things, y'all don't want to talk about that. Y'all want to talk about, you know, fidelity, honoring your marriage vows, raising your children. It tell you in the Bible, do not, do not, what does it tell you in the Bible? Let's, let's get all out. We got to talk about this now. What does it say about a divorced woman in Matthew 5, 31? It is said, whoever divorces his wife except on the grounds of sexual immorality makes her an adulteress, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Now, of course, they made excuses of that. They said, well, we're not under the law anymore, Yusuf. That ain't what he said. But I'm going to let you have that because your belief is your belief. But I don't have to argue about the meaning of, behind what's going on here because I got the empirical evidence that I look out in society of what happens when we get away from following God's law or understanding natural law principles. You see what we have in society today. 
I think birth control was the worst thing that ever happened to man. It ain't the best thing that ever happened. It was the worst thing that ever happened because now it birth control was a direct link to horrorism. It was a direct channel to it. It was a direct, they, they, they mutually connected to each other. They connected to each other and birth control is unnatural. If we were in a state of, uh, in a natural state, wouldn't be no birth control. So you wouldn't have women hopping from man to man. And you probably would have men just up and leaving their wives. Though men don't do that, but you know the family would be more intact. You know we probably still have like those situations. Like my grandparent, my grandfather had like sixteen brothers and sisters. Sixteen. When you don't see that no more, but that was that was before birth control. That was common. That was common in the black community. You have sixteen brothers and sisters, 15, 11 of us, thirteen of us. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Now numbers now numbers are going down. That's right. Do unto thy neighbors. And that's what it comes down to is karma. Why would you do something to somebody you don't want done to yourself? Why would you do that? It's going to be done to you. I mean, if you under you have to, a person that does commit certain acts in their mind, they have to believe that it's not going to happen to me. The guys on the internet, you talking about you're not going to get married because you see how these women are. It doesn't matter if you don't get married. You're going to have to pay that price in something that it may not be the exact same thing, but it's going to balance out. The universe is always balances the scales. That's why it's called the scales of justice. They're going to balance out. So whatever you took from somebody, something is going to be taken from you in equal measure. That's how, that's how karma operates. It may not be the exact same thing. It may not be a woman. But it's going to be something that's going to affect you just as bad. Think about that. Let's keep going. Let's look. So we got to be careful with this, you know, state of Georgia or state of Delaware or whatever state that they in and understand that, you know, we got to get back to honoring the creator of the boundless universe. That's why these people used to come into this courtroom with a Bible and have you swear on a Bible. That's why they got on those black robes. Those are robes of a priest. That comes from the priests of the original judges were priests because the only man that could rightfully judge another man is somebody who was doing it for God. How you gonna judge over another man? You ain't got the sanction of God. <laughs> only there's only one judge, the creator of the boundless universe. And if you're not judging other men in accordance with his precepts, then I don't know who you are. And we got plenty of case law and history to support that statement. The founding fathers understood that principle. Let's keep going. That's in violation of both my natural rights as a sovereign individual and in violation of the Constitution. It's in, in violation of Articles 2, uh, 4, 5, 6, and uh, Article 10, which is the right of revolution. Uh, government being instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the whole community, and not for the private interest or alone of any one man, family, or class of men. Therefore, whenever the ends of government are perverted, and public liberty manifestly endangered, and all other means of redress are ineffectual, the people may, and of right, ought to reform the old or establish a new government. The doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. Was it your position that the laws of the state of And that's why that, um, what they call the, um, the siege on Capitol Hill, that always bothered me because those people understood the Declaration of Independence. Whenever a government becomes despotic, it is the duty of the people to come and they can remove them and put in another force of government. Everybody fought, thought that the election was stolen. I am one. I think that the election was stolen, and a lot of Americans think that the election was stolen. Fuck the narrative of CNN. 
That's why y'all letting in all of these foreigners and everything, because you already know everybody going to be watching everything this time. You can't do the same thing this time. And Trump got overwhelming support. Overwhelming. I think Joe Biden's approval rating is like 10%. What the, I think what they're going to do is they're going to bring in Michelle Obama. They need, they need a bomb to bring in. They can't bring in uh, Obama. Uh, 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 because he, you know, because he, uh, uh, because he already did two terms. So they're going to bring in his wife. That's what they saying. They're going to bring in, I think they're going to bring in Michelle Obama, you know, because that's the only thing I think the person that they could bring in, they could probably be popular enough to get on, uh, to approach having a popularity of Donald Trump, though, I don't think it matters. It's going to match Donald Trump though. I don't think uh, Michelle Obama's popularity is going to match Donald Trump. Real interesting comment. I like what uh, somebody just said. He said, when a woman gets a man while on birth control, her, harm, her hormones make a softer, gentler man attractive. When she gets off birth control, she desires a more masculine man. That's why a lot switch after ma uh, marry, marriage. And I could agree with that. I could agree with that wholeheartedly. I think that, that there's a lot to that. We're going to have a discussion about, uh, uh, we got to get into a long discussion about, about we got to, it starts with virginity though. It starts with the, it's, it, this lack of respect for the virgin is the is the source of all the problems with marriages. Ain't nothing going to marriages are never going to go back to where they were until men out there start honoring the uh, uh, honoring ma uh, marriage again. The, uh, virgin marriages. They still do that in other countries. That's why they're not having the problems that we have in the United States and countries that honor it. They're not having the problems they have in the United States. It's the United States is having this problem because it's a free for all over here and there aren't any rules or anything. There's no rite of passage for the children. There's just nothing. It's just do what the fuck you want to do. Which is the Thelema. Pull up the Thelema. Do what thy wilt. Pull it up right now. The Thelema. Now don't be scared. Pull it up. Do what thy wilt. And let me put it, let me put it in chat so y'all can pull it up. The Thelema. The Thelema. Go ahead and pull it up and research that. Do what thy wilt. Freedom, true freedom only comes with a Conscious cooperation with natural laws or God's laws. That's, that's the only thing true freedom in. True freedom to, to, to ignore natural laws, you're going to do that to your detriment. There's no such thing as any creature in the universe that is operating, that's not operating under some sort of law. Law governs all. There's no such, so it's ridiculous when they say, well, sovereign citizens don't believe that they don't have to follow any law. That's not a that's not a true sovereign individual. A true sovereign individual recognizes the laws, and he also honors the laws of man as far as they are in accord with the laws of the creator of the boundless universe. All right, so let's keep going. Do not apply to you. It is my position that the laws of the state of New Hampshire are immoral and in violation of uh, both my natural rights and the Constitution. Uh, I'd like the court to point out the victim in the case. Certain, certain crimes that are, are victimless. Uh, now, I want you to pay attention to the... Uh, to the ma the mannerisms of this judge, he just asked. I'd like you to point out the victim. He that judge. Did you say I, I, I certain uh certain certain crimes are victimless? Okay. Pause. Now your public servants and attorneys who are watching this will question your intelligence, but let's think about this in a common sense terms. How can there be a crime when there is no victim?
I'm trying to reason it out. I'm, I'm trying to reason. I'm kind of slow. I'm trying to slow. Somebody help me out. Somebody help me out. Somebody help me out in the chat. How can there be a crime when there is no victim? Is that anywhere in scripture? Some, somebody help me out. How can there be a crime when there is no victim? So, okay, so drugs is a victimless crime, by the way. Drugs are victimless crime. Now, they will say that it does damages to society and the community as a whole. This is what they're going to say. I remember I was sitting in a in a class and there was this uh this officer was telling me that they gave me the numbers. This this was some years ago. This is about 20, 25 years ago. However, I still remember what I was told. That I was told that five hundred thousand people a year die from cigarette smoke. Eighty thousand people a year die from alcohol. And 3,500 people die a year from drugs. Now, if you really are concerned about your fellow man, shouldn't we be, first of all, start with the 500,000 people who are dying from cigarettes? Shouldn't we address that first before we ever start talking about drugs? And then aren't the cigarette companies doing something that is adversely affecting society as a whole. Could we make that argument? Am, am I wrong? I'm trying to find out, you know, I'm just trying, I'm not very intelligent. I'm not very intelligent. You know, I think I got a little bit of common sense. I've heard the arguments for and against the things that I'm speaking of. And I just haven't been able to, you know, just kind of like connect the dots on it. You know, it's like, so this is why we're asking the question. Because right now he just said that there's no victim. Now we know under the common law, under God's law, it requires a victim. And someone has to swear out an affidavit and tell how they've been injured. They have to swear to God they've been they've been injured. They have to swear to God. That's what affidavits are. That's what depositions are. That's what taking the stand is. You swearing to God. You swear to the whole truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth to help you, God. So under God's law. How did I wrong another individual? Where's the evidence that I infringed on another person's right to life, liberty, and property? So you're going to say that the state of where they at Delaware or whatever, that they are the injured party. Sir, that is a legal fiction entity. That is a juristic personality. That is that is a construct of the mind. That is some shit you made up in your fucking head. <laughs> I was talking to an attorney right one time. He said, man, I'd love to see you in a deposition to see how you handle the deposition. And we were having a talk and we were in his office and he was one of those attorneys. He was one of, every now and then you're going to come across one. If you just out there long enough, you're going to come across an attorney that's going to be completely transparent. He's going to tell you the truth. He don't give a fuck. He's going to tell you what it is. It's going to happen. All of them ain't, ain't like these people, you know. Some you're going to run into one like, man, fuck this, man. This, here's what it is, all right? He told me, he said, man, he said, look, man, they made all this shit up. It's all made up. It's fairy tale shit. They made it up. They just pulling shit out of their ass and making it up as they go along. And then calling it a crime. They're, caught, they're making up crimes because they got to feed the criminal justice system because the criminal justice system is the new Jim Crow. It is the new slave trade because according to the 13th Amendment, slavery never went anywhere. 
We know when we read the definition of slavery in a Black's Law Dictionary in the expert commentary, it tells you they made a compromise with the abolitionists, and that is they wouldn't use the word slave anymore. But the Constitution actually protects the peculiar institution of slavery. Wow. Now that should be something. I mean, I, if, that's the worth the price of admission right now if you're watching, man. You didn't know that. You thought that slavery was done away with, didn't you? even though you can read it right there <laughs> and you can see anybody in the sixth grade, if you ask your sixth grader, read the 13th Amendment and tell me, that, how do, what do you comprehend from that? Did slavery go away? Well, no, mom, it says that slavery, if you get convicted, that you're a slave. I think I can get a seventh or eighth grader to kind of like comprehend that. Why can't you? So slavery ain't went nowhere. So let's just dispense or dispel all these notions that, oh, well, slavery don't exist anymore because slavery is alive and well. Plantations are alive and well. They've just been modernized. They're just more sophisticated. You just, they, they're not recognizable as that such because they keep putting on the movies and shit, keep reminding you of slave ships and motherfuckers standing in front of people and they picking them out and splitting people in two and tearing families and raping people. So in your mind, they keep your mind right there that that's what slavery is. All the while, right behind your back, they still got it going. They just sell you now the stock market in the form of bonds. And charge you with something. Because after all, these are, you know, this, are, this is a form of peonage. You get a charge, a charge is a lien. So you're some sort of, this is some sort of debtor's prison. If it's some sort of de debtor's prison, is this some sort of civil? Is it admiralty? I'm not saying it's admiralty. A lot of y'all say, oh, that name. We didn't say it's admiralty. We say it's, in, it's colorable admiralty. Admiralty is for Article 3. It's colorable. And this is when we got to get into an understanding of the federal courts. Okay, are federal courts Article 1 courts or Article 3 courts? That's a very simple question. But if you were to ask that question in court, you would get a, they probably would try to charge you contempt for asking that question. If you ask a judge, is this an Article 1 or Article 3 court, he might, he might threaten you with contempt. And you'll be like, what the fuck? Why are you going to give me contempt? How am I going to effectively mount a defense against myself if I don't know the venue I'm in, the nature of the action, whether or not you have in personam jurisdiction over me or not, until it's been properly alleged by the prosecution, which there's no announcement of any of those things in the charging instrument. Yeah, men did make the problem. Men did make the problem. They did. <laughs> Man, I'm in totally agreement with that. Let's keep going. I just wanted to kind of throw that in there a little bit. He asked them, where's the injured party? One of the things that the sovereign citizens like to talk about is, yeah, the injured party. You know, in common law, under God's law, an injured party is a person who's in, actually injured. If I kill someone, if I, you know, seriously injure a person if i violate their wife or their daughter or if i have you know stolen some property from someone or something like that these are injuries that someone uh, that another private person another real when we say real living soul we we mean when we're talking about somebody in the real world how can i face my accuser if my accuser is the state of georgia how can I face my accuser if my accuser is the state of Texas? How can I face my accuser if my accuser is a legal fiction? And we know the definition of a legal fiction is an assumption that something is true, even though it may be untrue, made especially in judicial reasoning to alter how legal rule operates. Lon Fuller's Legal Fictions. Get the book. You can get it on Amazon. Lawn full of legal fictions. Educate yourself. Don't let these people think that it's not the responsibility of the citizens to know the law. It is our responsibility to know the law. And it, the, I, I, I've never known that the law can be licensed. 
How can the law be licensed? And then you expect me to follow it. Think about that. Think about these things. Man, y'all start thinking, man. And when these election times come up, ask these people proper questions. I'm just, we just, I, I just got a couple of questions, man. I got a couple. You don't have to get mad at me. You got to threaten to put me in jail or nothing like that for asking a question, man. I'm not disrespecting you. I'm not calling you out your name. I'm not saying anything like that. It is my understanding that the Constitution for the United States of America is the supreme law of the land. And all the state constitutions cannot draft any law that goes contrary to it. Am I correct? Well, if I'm correct in that, and that I also I'm also have the understanding that everybody in government took an oath to uphold that document. So isn't it my job as we the people to make sure that you hold to your oath? Who is if we don't do it, who is going to do it? If we don't make sure that you're honoring your oath of office, who's going to do it? No, you know, the system has been running for thousands of years. It won't be dismantled quickly, easily or quickly. I don't think I don't think it needs to be dismantled. I'm not I'm not a proponent of going into, you know, uh, in a chaotic society. However, I do think it needs to be tweaked somewhat. I think I think we need a little bit more transparency. I think we need a little bit more honor. I think we need a little bit more truthfulness. I think if we start telling the truth that then things will go back to the way that they're supposed to go naturally. Let's keep going. Let's see what else is happening with this case. Uh, these laws were slavish and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. So is it your position that the laws of the state of New Hampshire don't, do not apply to you? It is my position that the laws of the state of New Hampshire are immoral and in violation of both my natural rights and the Constitution. Uh, I'd like the court to point out the victim in the case. Certain certain crimes that are, are victimless. Uh, these laws were pertaining to marijuana was passed for protection of society because somebody in their infinite wisdom thought that marijuana, possession of marijuana was a crime. Wasn't this kind of cringe? Someone in their infinite wisdom. Someone in their infinite wisdom thought marijuana was a crime and it could it, it harm society. Who? Who? Who are these people that came to the conclusion that you can govern what I put into my body? I want you to think about that. You got somebody telling you that there is a plant that grows out of the ground freely. And they telling you what you can and can not do with it as it relates to your own person, even though it don't hurt nobody else. I thought freedom was the ability to do what I want, when I want, how I want, where I want, want whenever I want, as long as I don't infringe on somebody else's ability to do what they want, when they want, how they want, whenever they want. That's the common law. That's God's law. When did we get away from that? Who, who made this decision that you could take my life away from me and put me in a cage for 10 years for doing something to myself or engaging in a, and, and transactions commercially with other individuals who are, you know, that they, they, they in full knowledge of what they doing. They consenting adults. What business is that of yours? I'll tell you what it is. You're saying that it affects interstate commerce. I know what your argument it is. They're saying that it affects interstate. All this is commercially related. That's the truth. Let's get deep into it. Let's get deep.
Are you it's, not, it's, not, it's not up to me to argue whether possession of marijuana should or should not be a crime. My job is simply to determine whether or not you did, in fact, violate the laws of the state of New Hampshire in the sense that you may or may not have had marijuana in your possession and that you may or may not have resisted arrest. Oh. Uh, who do you work for? He, 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 he works for the state of New Hampshire, and, and I believe we've been through this uh, routine before. Uh, is, there any, is there anything further you wish to say regarding these matters? Y'all see how nervous he's getting. That's what happens to almost all of them when you start hitting them with questions like this. That's why, that's why they want to do something to me. Because I'm, I'm creating a problem over here. A major problem. Because now we got a huge amount of people coming into court asking too many damn questions. Who do you work for? How am I going to get a fair trial if you work for the state of New Hampshire, the police officer works for the state of New Hampshire, the prosecutor works for the state of New Hampshire, and my defense attorney works for the state of New Hampshire? Do you, I just, do, have y'all been listening to me and, and just stop to think about how much this, now we're not supposed to be the intelligent people now. <laughs> we're not supposed to be the intelligent people, but any reasoning man or woman can like, that shit don't make no sense. How is that justice? How is that justice? That's like this. <clears throat> Let's say <clears throat> I have my wife and my kids and we have a house. So my son gets into a fight with another young boy and I grab the little boy up and bring him to my house and set him down on the couch. And I listen to the story of both of them, <laughs> you know, who favor you think I'm going to rule in, for, in favor of? Who, who, where is the slant going to go, you know, in a situation like that? It, it, between somebody else's child and my child. I mean, one time I was in, a, I was in my neighborhood, right? <laughs> and um, I'm walking in the neighborhood. And so it's after school. So there's going to be this after school fight in my neighborhood. And my neighborhoods are very, it's a nice neighborhood. It's always quiet, never any drama, or anything like that. But all of a sudden, it's this large group of black girls. They meet in after school because somebody was talking shit in school and they want to fight. And this one, there was only one, uh, one young man with them. And he then drove a car full of these girls to meet these other girls to fight. He's the only boy anywhere to be seen. The rest of them are all girls. They finna fight. And they then drove in his car to take him over there to jump on his girl. So I'm walking up to the crowd of people. And they arguing. You know, they can't fight. They, they ain't start swinging yet. They, they in they talking shit phase right now. You know, like, Bit, blah, blah, you know, that right there. So I walk in. I say, ladies, ladies, ladies. Let's, let's pause. Let's stop. I'm talking like this. Talking like this, you know, trying to be reasonable. And they, they don't even pay me no attention. They just keep on, they finna go to blows. So I went into hood mode. I went full hood mode on the ass, full Oak Cliff. Look, bitch, blah, blah, blah. All of a sudden, everybody attention turned to me because now I'm speaking their language. And they seen a man here and big dude aggressive, tell him to get the fuck out of my neighborhood. So everybody start running to the cars. And I'm looking, and all this is all I did to the young boy. I just looked at him. I gave, I gave him that look like, you piece of shit. Why would you bring these girls over here to fight? He just looked at me. That's all you had to do as a man. Because I'm telling, talking to these women first. I'm looking at this young boy. I'm just looking at him. Hey, y'all get on in the car. Let's go. Y'all get in the car. Let's go. So one of the girls... She didn't want to leave. She said, you ain't my daddy. I said, you goddamn right I am. I don't give a fuck about you. I'll lock your motherfucking ass up. 
Now get the fuck out of my motherfucking neighborhood. <laughs> and she left. You're right. I'm not your daddy. I'm going to care about my own first. So we're dealing with the state of Georgia or the state of New Hampshire. It, isn't, it, isn't it a logical conclusion? We can come to conclusion that they're going to worry about their own first. Just like when I went in that courthouse and tried to get that judge's oath of office, everybody in the courthouse was on the same team and I was looked at as the enemy. I'm just kind of like, you know, so am I saying something that does not make sense? I mean, I'm, is this unreasonable, the, these questions that we're asking? Um, should not a thinking man or woman seek to get answers from individuals for these type of questions? If we're a layman, if we haven't been formally educated in law, shouldn't we kind of like ask a question? Like, how can this be? That's why your, your def, a public defender always giving you a plea deal. You, they got a 98%, 98.6% conviction rate, man. And the overwhelming majority of that go is plea deals. Of course, the damn public defender work for the state. They all work for the state, man. So how am I going to, how is that fair? I just, I'm, I'm, wait a minute, let me look in the chat. I don't know. Let me look in the chat. Somebody, somebody know. Okay. I think we need to also explore the possibility that a lot of people in government are extraterrestrials. We're going to have to start talking about that. Y'all need to keep that in the back of your mind. If a foreign, if a foreign group of aliens have came to this plant planet and have assumed identities and government, don't you think, don't think you know that that's a matter of concern? They, they're the state of technology is well beyond what y'all realize it is. I hope you understand that. They give you, they give you the technology, your little smartphones and computers. That's twenty years old. It's at least twenty years old before you get it. That's at least 20 years old. And older than that, probably. I hear now the numbers are 50 years ahead. That, that the general public does not understand or know the true state of that technology that exists on this planet. So right now, he's asked this man, you know, who do you work for? And he got nervous. That's a good question. You work for the legislature. He says, it's not my job to determine this. He has, he is an administrator. He has a ministerial duty to perform. This is not a true judicial officer, not of article three, not of the judicial branch of government that assumes their powers from the state or federal constitution. He's not that kind of judge. He's a judge. He's an, he's an administrative judge. He's an administrative law judge. He's enforcing statutes. And anytime time an officer enforces statutes, he's, uh, he's, he's acting ministerially, not judicially. In other words, he's just following instructions. Somebody's telling him what to do. Is that fair? Let's keep watching. Um, I don't think this is a fair trial because uh, both the judge and the prosecutor are on the same team. You have the right. If I, if I should find you guilty, you have the right to appeal. Take that issue to a higher court. Nothing further. Uh, based on the evidence before me, I do find that you had marijuana in your possession. I am satisfied that the uh, 
chain of custody indicates that the <laughs> substance that was removed from your body in possession is the same substance that was delivered to the state crime lab and analyzed as marijuana, and it is the same substance that has uh, found its way back uh, to be exhibit number one in this case. Also find that you did resist arrest. It may have been a peaceful resistance. Now, whether you want to call it dropping to the ground, lying on the ground or whatever, but uh, you did uh, in a peaceful way attempt to hinder your arrest. I will start finding you guilty on that complaint also. Uh, what does the state ask me? Uh, with regard to the marijuana standard fine, $250 plus the 24% penalty assessment and I'm resisting arrest and a $500 fine, all of that suspended for one year upon condition. Notice how they went straight to the money. They went straight to, this ain't civil though. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing on this channel because really when you see the truth, you see how ridiculous these people are. These people are ridiculous. Some of the things they say be ridiculous. <laughs> this is not really civil. Everything that they do is about money. You insulting my intelligence trying to pretend like it's anything not. This ain't about truth, justice in the American way. This is about paper. This is about bread getting to the bag. They went straight, started talking about money, but this is not in the nature of admiralty, though. Because that's what, in admiralty, that's what they do. They hit you with a fine. They do an assessment for you. So when I come into the court and ask the judge, I say, Yana, I'm the holder in due course. Here's a third party intervener making a special appearance as an authorized representative for the defendant. I accept for value and return for value all the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption as principal available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts contained in the charging instrument. Please use my exemption for offset and adjustment of the public charges against the defendant and release the order of the court to me immediately. All y'all out there know what I just said. And if I get some pushback, I say, Yana, may I have your name, please? And if they say judge so-and-so, I say, your awful communication is accepted for value and your dishonor's return may have your name, not your title, because judge so-and-so is a title. I, that's not a name. Your name is what is on your oath of office down at the Secretary of State. And everyone that I've seen thus far don't have judge nowhere on it. It has your name. So my next one is, do you have a claim against me? Why am I asking, do you have a claim against me? Because it's civil. This is a claim. He's going for money. Do you know anyone who does have a claim against me? I request the Honorable Judge Direct the Prosecutor to provide the assessment for the charges along with a certified audit trail of all transactions, including voucher, as well as all disbursement documents and receipts as it relates to this case. For the record, John. Are there any more charges, Your Honor? These are questions. They're just questions. I can't ask a question. So you're, you're asking for the uh, the five hundred dollar fine on the resisting to be suspended one year one, for one year, and the uh, fine on the possession of marijuana to pay. Correct. Uh, do I get to say what I believe the sentence should be? You do. Um, not only should I not be further arrested against or forced to pay any fines, I should be restituted pecuniarily for the time I spent in jail, and I want my property returned to me. You say your property, you mean your, uh, your space exhibit? Yes. One? 
not only will I deny that request, but I will grant a motion when it's filed to uh, destroy it. Okay. I hereby announce my intention to appeal this decision and I request a stay of sentencing pending the appeal. I oppose the sentence uh, as far as uh, the payment of any fine that I should impose. That will be stayed until uh, you've completed your completed the appeal process. I want to make it uh, clear that I have no intention to pay any fines. I will still let you complete the appeal process. You know, there may be another way of handling that. That's why as a secure party, we don't argue things. She's like, yeah, and I'll be more than happy to satisfy that obligation. I, I have a promissory note that I'd like to tender into the court that for full satisfaction of this obligation. And if he says we only take, uh, sorry, sir, we only take checks, cash, or credit cards, I say, I'm sorry, but am I to understand the honorable judge is willfully violating public policy. Is that my understanding for the record? You don't argue about that shit. Secured parties don't argue. Listen, I'm only, these aren't secured party videos I'm doing. I hope y'all understand that. These are just video reviews I'm doing to people who challenge the court. I don't really teach challenging the court. The information I give you, like how, what to say in court and things like that, because there's a lot of people that like to challenge. And I'm okay with challenge. You do need to know how to challenge sometimes because they are going to sit in there and act like they don't know what you're talking about when you kind of discharge a case. So then you do need to know how to shift gears. It's so, okay. Well, since you are trying to say this is not civil, I got a couple of questions because I'm confused now. Boy, some attorneys going to be making some videos about me today, boy. <laughs> they make some videos and piss you off. <laughs> Get on your goddamn job. You my street team. Go promote me. Get in your damn job. Get to work. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me today. That's it as far as this review goes. Oh, hold on. Let me let me finish what he uh what he gonna say. Hold on. Let me finish. Yes. If you make it your contention. To not pay the fine, uh, you end up going to the House of Correction. Man, I'm gonna sue the fuck out of you guys next. You know? Yeah, that was it right there. Um, that's my review. I, I hope you got some out of that from that. You know, just you know, I was looking at that. I thought that was a very good video because the questions he was asking. I wanted you to see how they respond. Notice that was a bench trial. Uh, it's about marijuana possession, I guess. And, um, you know, it's a real interesting page in Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper where he discusses that, that why they think that they, um, it's this doctrine of parents patria where because when you had a social security number, you're looked at as a, um, as a uh, welfare recipient, as a person who can't take care of themselves. So it's their job to take care of you. So that's the doctrine of parents patria. So it's their job to make sure that you don't poison yourself with marijuana. That's really what's happening behind the scenes. And that's why this sovereignty, all communist socialists and Marxists, they, when you say the word sovereign, they hate that word. Y'all got to understand you've been infiltrated in the United States. These are the people that are making these anti-sovereign videos and sovereign citizens. He's a communist, man. He's socialist. You got to know who you you got to know who you're dealing with. I, you know, when you look at Chisholm versus Georgia and, li and listen to what them Supreme Court justices said, I don't argue against that. The people are sovereign in the United States. We're not sovereign citizens. The people are sovereign. And that sovereignty and the authority of that is derived from the creator of the boundless universe, not from another man that got shit out of a pussy just like me. Anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. I want to get your I want to get your feelings on this. And remember, there will be a webinar, all members of SBC University tonight, nine o'clock. 
Make sure you sign in at Central Time, Texas Time. Also, I want to thank everybody for the uh, donations. Thank everybody for the donations, all donations I got. I appreciate that. Jeffrey Vault, $10. You've helped me tremendously over the years, and I appreciate you pointing me in the right direction. Keep it up, friend. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Also, James Burgess, thank you for the nine to the nine power of nine and my brother. I DTW, the 499 TV. I appreciate that, brother. James Burgess again. Thank you for the 999. Uh, David Cossets, much love from me and Jazz. Aunt. Thanks for the wisdom. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate all you. Thank you so much. And I will see you tonight in class. Peace to the gods. Hold it down. Peace. I'm out.